I just wanted to go over a little bit about my personal AR-15. And this is also to kind of test my Galaxy S4 video to see how good the video is on this phone for things like this. Because I, I would like to be able to use my phone more often for videos. It's kind of convenient. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes, I own an AR-15. Actually, I own two of them. This is the one that I've chosen to kind of trick out for long range shooting, which is something that I enjoy. Now, why do I enjoy long range shooting? Well, I think it's a good life skill to have. I think it's a good life skill to have to be able to know how to operate a weapon, how to disarm a weapon in case you need to. You know, maybe you're in a situation where, God forbid, a criminal is attacking somebody, they drop their gun, it's right next to you, and you pick it up. What are you going to do? Um, if you're not trained in weapons handling, you're not going to know how to disarm that firearm and make sure nobody gets hurt by it. So I think for anybody, even if you don't like guns, especially if you don't like guns, um, learn how to handle a firearm. Um, so that's one reason I enjoy shooting. It's just because I think it's a good life skill to have. It also is a sport that teaches you how to deal with adversity. I've enjoyed a lot of sports like that over the years. Golf's a game that designed designed to piss you off and, you know, you still have to maintain your peace of mind or you're gonna suck. RC airplanes are similar. RC airplanes, maybe a lot of times you get close to crashing or you lose control a little bit, it makes your heart jump. And if you can't deal with that situation and keep your mind clear and do what's, you know, what's right, what you need to do, your airplane is gonna crash. Same thing with shooting, especially when you're down at the range, you know, some guy could be next to you blasting with a 338 or a 50 BMG or something ridiculous like that. You gotta be able to maintain your composure, your peace of mind and body in order to be able to shoot straight. So rifle shooting at, a, at long distances is about peace of mind. It's not about violence. It's about achieving clarity of mind and, and getting that shot where it needs to go. And this is, you know, obviously a skill that's useful for hunting and it's obviously useful for battle, for war as well. But this is a skill that I think is also good just for your general peace of mind. And that's what we really do sports for, isn't it, folks? To, to help us uh, with the rest of our lives. You know, none of us are going to be professional football players, but if you go play pickup football on the weekends, you're doing that to help your peace of mind. So, enough preaching. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I was raised by a preacher. But if you want to talk gun control and you want to be civil, Leave me some comments, whatever you think, uh, in the comments, and I'll try to kind of explain where I'm at. I'm not going to do battle with people in the comments, and I will delete rude comments. But please, have your say on gun control if you want to. That's what this video is kind of about. And I wanted to just kind of go over how I personalize my gun for the folks that love AR-15s out there. If you're planning to buy one and you're interested in long-range shooting. Just for safety purposes, I want to show folks I did lock the bolt back and my chamber is clear there. If the bolt snaps forward because I'm laying it on the bolt catch there, <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. So at the front, uh, I have just the normal flash hider. And this just is a device that kind of blocks the flash from the shooter. So if you're shooting in a low light situation, you're not going to lose your night vision from getting flashes in the eye. This is not, as a lot of people think, uh, to make it harder for the enemy to locate you. From this direction, you, there's still a pretty br bright flash. I'm going to probably replace that with a muzzle brake, just so I can get better stability for repeat shoots. I've got the standard A2 gas block in sight on there right now. I'm going to replace that with a gas block that has a rail on it, so I can use my flip-up sights. I've got a pair of flip-up M-Bus sights so I want to use those as a backup, and I'll put one up front here if I can find a rail that's the right height. I've got the quad rail on here instead of the standard foregrip. I had it came with the standard like rifle fore, foregrip on here, and I didn't really like that one. It was small, and my hands are kind of big, so I wanted something bigger, and it didn't have any mounting points on it. So now I've got room for anything up here, backup sights, a light, if I want a flashlight maybe to hang off the side or something, there's lights you can get that attach to the top rail and hang off the side. So different stuff I can put up there uh, now that I have the quad rail. It added a little bit of weight, 
but it did allow me to put on this rubber grip, which I really like. This rubber grip is pretty cheap stuff. You just cut it to the size you need, and it fits into the rails. It's got little teeth underneath it. So it fits into the rails. It's nice and tight on there. And even when your hands are a little sweaty, this provides really great grip. So if you're into precision shooting, and I think even for a tactical situation, this would be really good. Next thing back uh, is my scope. This is a Bushnell scope. It was pretty cheap. It was like 350 bucks, I think. It's a Bushnell four power scope. It's got a pretty accurate turret on there. It's 0.1 mil, so 10 clicks give you a minute of angle. So if you're off by a tenth of an inch, you know, at 100 yards, one click. <laughs> That's pretty darn precise for a scope in that price range. The scope is mounted with this, it's a Alamo 4 star quick release scope mount, and I really like this one. It's really handy. It goes on straight every time. You don't have any problems with I've taken it off and putting it back on and, and it goes on perfect every time. The gun is right where it was. So if you have some backup sights, uh, which I'm going to get some, then it's very handy. You can just pop this off and use your backup sights if you need to. The other thing, again for left-handed shooting that I got was this Raptor charging handle and this is really nice it's on both sides you can release the clamp so if you're pulling from this side which I'm doing you can grab it with your thumb and forefinger like that and that is really really handy uh, for when you want to reload at the range I have the uh, this is the battle arms development Bad ass, which stands for Battle Arms Development Ambidextrous Safety Selector. I was having trouble maintaining my sh my shooting fundamentals, which we want to be putting AR-15s back on safe. Whenever we're done shooting, you know, you want to put that gun back on safe. And I was getting out of the habit of doing that because I shoot left-handed and the damn thing was on the wrong side. So I got one that has levers on both sides. And the Badass is a really cool product. It has five different kinds of levers, so you can put different ones on different sides. I put the standard safety lever on this side for left-handed shooting, and then on the other side, I put the low profile safety lever. You can see it's like thin, and it sits up against the, the side real nice. And that's so it doesn't get in the way of my trigger finger, which goes down across that area. Let's see, I put the Magpul MIAD grip on here. This, is, this grip is just slightly larger and it's got a much better texture to it. Much better texture and feel than the stock grip had. Um, and it's the right size for my hand. So again, you know, a customization that's just for me. This, this, you know, I like the texture on this one. You don't have to have a death grip on this to make your hand fit it nice and tightly and your hand's not gonna slip around. This right here is probably the best modification that I ever made. This is a Geisley, um, I'm gonna get this name wrong. I think it's a three gun trigger. It's like a competition match two stage style trigger. And this just has the softest break ever. It's like butter. It's ridiculous how nice this is now. It was 290 bucks or something. It's not cheap. And it was kind of a bitch to install as well. You have a, a stronger hammer. It comes with a much stronger hammer. So it was a bitch to get that hammer in. The spring is just super tight. But it all works really, really nicely. Um, if you get it together and you do everything they say, I think anybody should be able to install a Geisley trigger like this and, and get it adjusted right. I chose the, the lighter pull spring because um, I'm just target shooting, but yeah, you do have to be careful with that one. And again, that's why I want to make sure I'm putting my gun on safe because this gun has a pretty light trigger pull. It's three and a half pounds. I use the 10 round magazines. 
you can get these in Colorado now just about anywhere because we have a 15 round limit. Um, I have a bunch of the 30 round magazines, but those suckers are just unwieldy. When you're trying to target shoot, um, the 30 round magazine actually extends down below here. So if you're, if you're shooting at a bench, sometimes that 30 round magazine actually hits the bench and it's stupid to just have that many rounds at the range you know now i have the 30 round magazine in case i freaking need it for some reason but you know at the range i don't need to have all that weight in that unwieldy large object in my way so i use those 10 round magazines at the range they're easy to load you know two of them i've got two of them that's a box of ammo so that's handy as well the last thing I put on here, uh, this was kind of expensive, but this is the Magpul Precision Rifle Stock, PRS Precision Rifle Stock. This added about a pound and a couple of ounces of weight over the old stock that was the collapsible MOE style stock. Part of the reason is because I had to put a longer buffer tube and a heavier buffer, you know, spring and, and plunger or whatever you call it, piston. And, and that actually makes the gun cycle a little nicer. This gun fires a little smoother now. So that I think was a good modification, but it added a little weight uh, with that longer buffer tube and longer spring and stuff inside there. And then the stock itself is considerably heavier than the MOE collapsible type stock. But this is just a really great mod. This is the second best thing other than the trigger, I think. It, it's perfectly adjustable. So this, you know, I've been playing around with the distance here, and I think I got it just about where I need it to be. But you can get this, um, and this pad back here is a little softer than the MOE stock, so that's kind of nice. It fits in the pocket of your shoulder really nicely. You can get the you know proper distance for your arm for your shooting position and I suppose if you had to you could mark this dial or something and change it up for different shooting positions if you had that need it also has this adjustable cheek rest which I absolutely needed because the MOE stock was stuck down here at this height and with my taller optic I just couldn't get the right cheek weld on this gun and that is super important. You are not going to be able to get a steady shot if your face is wobbling around up against the stock. And I was having to basically put my jawbone on this part of the stock in order to shoot that gun and aim properly, get the eye relief, and get you know your eye straight in front of the scope like it's supposed to be. And that was rattling my teeth, and it was just stupid to have it like that. So I got this PRS stock and that made a lot of difference. It also balances the gun really well. So overall, if you pick up this gun and especially if you have a 10 round mag in there, it balances like right here. So you can pick it up by the pistol grip and it's just barely nose heavy. Uh, that I think is really nice. For me, it balances right over that hand that I'm using to support. and. To support it with and the center of gravity is kind of close to the trigger I just think that's that's really good now I don't know what the pros would say but for me it seems to be working well you know I wish I had saved my targets from today because they were pretty darn good when I can get stable and get in the proper shooting position and I remember all my fundamentals I can get five bullet holes to touch each other at 50 yards and I can get them within an inch of each other at a hundred yards and the guy at the range Looked at my target and said hey that you know, that's really pretty good You know, you know, you should compare notes with your friends and stuff This has made a really big difference being able to customize a gun is super important and that's why I think people should have these People should be allowed to have modern sporting rifles that they can customize to their comfort level so that it can really be their rifle and they can be safe with it and they can be accurate with it. You know, when somebody's out there hunting, you don't want them to, you know, miss and hit you instead. 
we want people out there who can be accurate with their weapons and who can be safe with them. And, you know, for that, I think a customizable modern weapon is great. Leave your comments what you think. And, you know, as long as you're polite, I will entertain discussions about gun control and such if you like. But this is my AR-15. And for AR-15 folks who like AR-15s or want to shop for one, feel free to ask me questions about this stuff. I've had some other mods on here that I took off, so I've got experience switching stuff around if you have any questions about that.